look at that. Oh, they're kind of sticking. I'm doing a little bit of welding. Okay, okay, enough of that. This is the fifth video in my Transformer Concepts playlist. Here we're looking at current and power. Now we ended the last video with that Arky Sparky and wondering, hey, if we shorted out the secondary, just tied both ends together, how many amps would flow? Now normally you would tie the secondary into certain loads and control how much current is flowing on it. But if you did have a short in the secondary, how many amps can this thing push through? Let's plug it in and see. Okay, they're wire nutted together. So uh, we're getting the maximum we can on the secondary. What is it? And we got about 75 amps almost. Okay, how about the uh, primary? Because it had two amps flowing on it when there was no load on the secondary. But with 75 amps on the secondary, what do we have here? Well, just over 17 amps flowing. So let's, uh, let's unplug this thing here pretty quick. Because if you notice, the amperage was starting to drop a little bit on the secondary, more noticeably than the primary. There's more current there. Uh, because it's starting to get a little bit hot. I'm using it well above its power rating. But nonetheless, we had about 75 amps on the secondary, the red wire, and about, um, what do we have, 17 or so on the primary. And what we've seen before is that the voltages, primary to secondary, are directly proportional to the number of turns. The side with more turns has a higher voltage than the side with fewer turns that has a lower voltage. But with current, we saw that this red wire, which has fewer turns and therefore less voltage, had a substantially higher current than the black wire with more turns and higher voltage. It appears that the current has a inverse relationship to the number of turns. And that's what the formula tells me, that my currents are inversely proportional to the number of turns. What that means to me is the side of the transformer, the primary in this case, the black wire with the higher voltage, P for primary, has the lower current. And the secondary, which is the lower voltage, has the higher current. And we have to flip it to keep the ratio the same, right? My five to one ratio equals five to one, if I simplify this down, uh, equals five to, well, I put approximately because it's more like four and a half to one. Why is that? Well, my transformer is relatively inefficient. Even when I had no current flowing on the secondary, it took two amps just to keep this primary excited. Right, just to keep the primary going, took two amps. If I were to buy a transformer that had similar size rating, I would expect just a mere fraction of an amp to keep that primary going. And then when I start adding loads on the secondary, I would see that increase. But in a way, there's some vectors involved, but we'll keep it simple here. The, um, that first couple amps, it's, it's kind of like wasted as far as the ratio is concerned. Not, not exactly, but kind of. So if I ignored those couple amps and took them out of there, 75 over 15 would pretty much hit my ratio. Um, so anyway, we'll look, we'll look at this, uh, these uh, turns that I have drawn up here. I have um, 10 turns here to two turns here. And what does that mean? If I simplify the ratio down, I've got five to one, meaning that for every five turns here, there's one turn on the secondary. And so if I apply 12, uh, excuse me, 10 volts here with 10 turns, I would expect each turn to have a drop of one volt and that would mutually induce one volt per turn on the secondary, giving me an output of two volts. Does that fit my ratio? Yeah. For every five turns, there's one. A five to one ratio. And is this voltage on the primary five times the secondary's voltage? Yeah. So how about my currents? Well, if I start connecting loads on the secondary and I run it up to 25 amps, how many amps would I expect to be flowing on the primary winding? Well, remember back in our formulas, more turns is more voltage. So the side with more turns had more voltage, but the currents were flipped. 
And so the side with fewer turns should have more, vo uh, more current. How much more? Well, five to one ratio. So I should see about five amps flowing on the primary here. And if that current goes up or down, this would go up or down as well, but it would stay with that ratio. The key here is that if the voltage goes down, the current goes up. Now, if this were a step up transformer and the voltage were going up, then the current on the secondary would be less than the primary, right? Just inverse to the voltage. Okay, what does that mean for power? Well, power is volts times amps. And if it were just resistors, it would be watts. But here we've got this whole inductor thing. We've got some reactants. So when you're mixing your resistance with your reactants, we use the term volt amps, which at least in single phase is still calculated, just your regular volts times amps. And uh, what do I have in the primary? 10 times five, 50 volt amps. What do I have in the secondary? Two times 25, 50 volt amps. So I tend to put that in the middle. The power rating because it applies to primary and secondary. And that's where I bring in the, well, kind of like the lack of efficiency in my own transformer. My core is not perfect, all this sort of stuff. Um, but if you were to buy a transformer, they are so efficient that we as electricians, at least, ignore the losses in the middle. Sure, they get hot, they create heat. That takes power and that doesn't go on to the secondary, but it's normally a very small percentage. And so we assume power in, equals power out and we ignore those losses in the middle so we can we you know our numbers will stay to the ratio and ultimately what we are concerned about because when in in the field when i get a transformer i'm going to see the power rating of the transformer and i'm going to see the input and output voltages most of the time i have to calculate the currents based on ohm's law and the reason i'm calculating the currents is so i can size my conductors my wires coming into the primary and going out of the secondary, plus my overcurrent protection, my fuses and circuit breakers to protect everything. And that little, you know, two, 3% inefficiency in a lot of the transformers we install, um, doesn't really matter when it comes to sizing the conductors. We just go full current here. The other thing we do is we always calculate it based on the transformers rating. That would be the full current if we're running it right up to its rating, because, uh, we want the conductor to be able to carry the maximum current. This guy at the beginning of this video, I ran it well past its rating. I was putting 75 amps on a number 10. That's, that's not a good thing generally, not when they're all wrapped up together like this. Let's look at these concepts on a scope. And then I'll end by asking the question, when current starts to flow in the secondary of a transformer, why is it that current also increases on the primary? What's going on inside here? Well, we'll start by looking at the voltages. The black sine wave is the voltage applied to the primary, a little over 120 volts. And the red line is the voltage being mutually induced into the secondary winding. And as you'd expect with a transformer that has about a five to one turns ratio, the secondary voltage is about one fifth of the primary voltage. Another reason I want to look at a scope is sometimes you see images that look that way. Primary and secondary voltage appearing opposite each other, 180 degrees out of phase, what we might call subtractive. But other times you'll see sine waves that appear to be in phase, what we might call additive. So which is it? What's going on inside the transformer? Are they in phase or are they out of phase by 180 degrees? And to answer that, I'll reference the first and third videos in this playlist. There I discuss that if you apply a voltage to a coil, current flows creating a magnetic field. That magnetic field in turn induces its own voltage. And that induced voltage whether self-induced in the primary is a back voltage against the applied or mutually induced into a secondary winding, either way, both ways, the induced voltage is opposite the applied. So that's what's going on inside the transformer. And that's Lenz's law. 
So inside the transformer, the induced is opposite the applied. How do I get it to look both ways? Well, these leads are connected to the, the ends of this secondary winding, both ends, and I just flip their orientation and it flips their sine wave. It's kind of like this battery here. If I want to measure its voltage, I'll get my meter, and if I measure it this way, I'll get a positive voltage. But if I flip my leads the other way, I'll get a negative voltage. Nothing changed in the battery, just the orientation of my leads or the reference point with which I made the measurement. So there are times when you need to know the relative polarity and, and use these things. Sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it does. I actually have a couple of videos listed in the description where I use the concept of relative polarity and another one where I discuss this uh, concept of reference. But uh, that's the voltage. Let's go ahead and see what that means for the current. So I'm gonna use this coil as a load and go ahead and connect it here. We'll see what happens. As I connect it, you'll probably see a, a voltage drop in the um, secondary. And uh, what did it do? Yep, dropped to about 24 volts. And uh, well, let's look at the current sine waves. Yeah, little voltage drop you would expect from, from putting the load on there. And here we have the currents. Black line is still the primary and red, the secondary. Now remember, the, the secondary has fewer turns and therefore a lower voltage, but there's that inverse relationship with the current. So the secondary should have a higher current than the primary, which it does. But you've probably already noticed that if the transformer is a five to one ratio, shouldn't the current on the secondary be five times the current on the primary? And to explain that, I've got to go back to the beginning of the video where I said I have a very inefficient transformer. It took two amps to generate that baseline magnetic field for this transformer without any load connected. It took what, two, 2.1 amps. And then, so let's, let's ignore that for a minute and just look at the increase in amps. So what is it about two, 2.1 on the primary, nothing on the secondary, there might be a phantom uh, tenth of an amp or two. But if I connect this, the primary increased about 1.2 amps and the secondary increased about six. And there's my five to one ratio. Let me draw it up here. So if I look at the increase, which was the 1.2 on the primary when I ran six amps on the secondary, that's my five to one ratio. Remember how I said, if I had bought a transformer, it would be a mere fraction of an amp here instead of the two amps to maintain that, that baseline magnetic field. And if that were a fraction of an amp, this would be a lot smaller and it wouldn't manipulate the numbers so bad away from the ratios we had. But this ratio of the addition is about five to one. And if I add more loads, they're gonna keep going in that ratio. And as I approach full load, it's gonna be closer to that five to one ratio. Um, next thing I wanna look at is the orientation of the currents. So on the, on the meter, they appear to be out of phase they're not quite 180 degrees, but they're close. Um, but I can manipulate that as well. With my amp clamp here, if I just turn it around, they appear in phase. Turn it this way, they appear out of phase. But what's going on in the transformer, they're not quite 180 degrees out of phase, but they're pretty much out of phase inside the transformer. But here I know you're gonna say, Dave, you're, you're using an inductive load. Um, that whole lead lag thing, what if I had a capacitive load or a resistive load? And what I'd have to tell you is that the inductive shows it a little better initially, or in my case, but the um, if I have a resistive or a capacitive, any load for that matter, if it's very lightly loaded, the numbers don't appear as the ratios imply. But as you increase the loading on the transformer, then they get closer and closer to the ratios here. And remember I said in the field as electricians, we do our calculations based on full load. So that's um, for sizing the wires. So it's much closer to the ratios at that. Um, but to answer more specifically the resistive or the capacitive load, at lower, if the transformer is very lightly loaded, they're not gonna be 
all the way out of phase from each other, opposite each other. But as you increase the loading, they're going to get pulled closer and closer to being opposite each other. And that's the point I'm trying to get to. So I'll say that the currents are pretty much opposite each other. They never quite hit that 180. And there's that vector math going on in here. So it's not just straight math when I'm talking currents. They're getting added at different angles. I'll keep this simple though. And if we think that the currents are pretty much opposite each other, let's think what happens. If there's no current flowing in the secondary, I just have the couple amps in the primary creating that baseline magnetic field. The secondary, no current, no magnetic field of its own. And, and this happens pretty much instantaneously, but I'll, I'll describe it slow motion. As I add a load on the secondary, current starts to flow on the secondary. Now, if I have current flowing, is the secondary going to generate its own magnetic field? Well, yes, it will. And here's the key. What is the orientation of the primary's magnetic field to the secondary's magnetic field? If the currents are pretty much opposite each other, the magnetic fields will oppose each other. So as you run current on the secondary, then it's going to generate a magnetic field that takes away from the magnetic field of the primary. Fewer lines of flux in the core. And if there's a, a smaller magnetic field, that means less pushback. And as soon as there's less pushback, well, more current's going to flow on the primary. And what happens when more current flows? Its magnetic field increases so that it maintains its differential over the secondary in order to keep pushing voltage out. One last thing, I can anticipate another question. You're going six amps, Dave, as opposed to the 1.2 increase or, or even as opposed to the whole thing that I have here. Um, isn't this going to create a bigger magnetic field that, that would overpower the primary and push the power the other way? But let's think about that. There are different ways to strengthen the magnetic field within a, a coil or, or a core, you know, where I have a core around it. One of them is to push more current and that'll increase the magnetic field. But another way is to increase the number of turns, send that current around this core more and more times to strengthen that, that field, to increase the lines of flux. So how many times does this six amps go around? It's on the secondary, so the six amps goes around about 100 times. But that 1.2 amps goes around the primary how many times? The 1.2 amps goes around about 500 times. 1.2 amps going around 500 times, 6 amps going around 100 times. Well, this one and this one about equalize each other. And if they equalize each other in opposite orientations, they'll nullify each other, leaving what? just that initial amperage to keep pushing the voltage to the secondary. So again, there's vector math involved. It's a little more complex than this, but simplistically speaking, that's how I get the increase in current on the primary when we start adding loads on the secondary. Well, that does it for the basic transformer concepts I wanted to get across in this series of videos. Um, I'm sure I'll come back to this setup at some point, uh, but I also uh, had some requests to do a video on, or some videos on uh, uh, power factor. So I'm thinking I'll do that next. Thanks for watching.